All right, so inside of Math 2, yesterday you did 6-6, six, six. today we're doing 6-5. All right, so when you open this up, you've got three things that you have to turn in. And the notes that I sent you looks kind of ugly. So I start with the lesson quiz. All right. All right, so over here. <clears throat> All right, so when you open this up, there's, it looks like it's a lot of information, but it's not really anything that's new. This is all, all of this stuff we have um, talked about before. Excuse me. <clears throat> Some of the throat, guys. Um, so, okay. My babies who are coming in, make sure your camera's on so I can give you that point in just a second. All right, so we know about domain and range. Here they are showing you a specific example. So we know that the domain is the set of, uh, well, they gave you the domain for this function. The domain is the set of your X's, all right? And algebraically, meaning like if we have a function, what that means is what are we allowed to plug into the function? So that's what domain is gonna mean. <clears throat> for the most part, we're gonna be looking at a graph so we're gonna be answering the question, how wide is the graph, All right? Domain answers the question, how much space horizontally does this thing take up? All right, so if domain is your X's range, it's gonna be your Y's. So over here, <clears throat> they show you that your range is all these numbers that are less than or equal to six. And you can see that the highest y goes up and down. The highest point, the peak of this thing is right here at six. And then it's under that. All right, so in general though, your range is gonna be, again, your y value. So how much space does this thing take up uh, vertically? Right. Same picture, but you're looking at it a different way. Let me get a sip of water here, guys. All right, so your range, <clears throat> your range is how much space does it take up vertically? Or algebraically, you're gonna answer the question, what do you get after you've plugged in all these X's? All right, so what, what comes out of this equation. That's gonna be your range. Okay. Max and min is pretty self-explanatory, um, but what's important here is that your function doesn't have to have one. It does not have to have, it doesn't have to have either, but a lot of times it'll have one or the other, but um, it doesn't have to have one. Okay. Axis of symmetry, <clears throat> not all functions are going to have an axis of symmetry because not all functions are symmetrical, right? Axis of symmetry, but it is a line and it just goes right through the middle of whatever you're looking at. So like this picture up here, this one has an axis of symmetry right, right here, right in the middle, right? This one doesn't have an axis of symmetry. And that's okay. But the way that you uh, communicate the axis of symmetry, the way that you write it is it's a line. So X equals a number. All vertical lines are written this way. X equals some number. You just have to find where it is. Okay. All right, and then the end behavior. <clears throat> It look this this notation looks kind of weird, but it's it's actually a pretty simple idea. So, in behavior, okay, it says describes what happens to the ends of the graph. So basically, what's happening on the as x approaches positive infinity, that's going to be the right side of the graph. As x gets bigger, 
or as we look at the right side of this graph, what's happening with Y? And that arrow is pointing straight up, right? So Y, they just named the function, Y approaches or goes to positive infinity. <clears throat> but if you look at, the, at it the other way, all right, as X approaches negative infinity, all that means is look at the left side of the graph, excuse me, look at the left side of the graph. Here, my arrow is pointing to, like it's pointing straight to the left, but we're looking for what it's doing in the Y direction. So is it going up or is it going down? And it's steadily going down, but this is an exponential function. So there is, if you recall, back to that unit, there's an asymptote here. So it's not gonna keep, this function is not gonna keep decreasing forever. It's gonna keep getting closer and closer and closer to this purple line. So it almost looks like it's touching it, but it doesn't actually touch it. And so we, we say that Y approaches negative two, it gets really close. It might be negative 1.9999999, but it's never gonna actually equal negative two. Okay. So there's a lot going on here because they're trying to show you that, you know, you can apply these ideas to any function. So they showed us four different functions here, the absolute value function, your exponential function, your square root function, <clears throat> and your quadratic function, which we just, we just had a unit on that. All right, so let me pause right here. <clears throat> All right, so moving on to inside the same playlist to reteach to build understanding. There's gonna be three questions here. I did not work these out on the notes. Okay, so we might have a different we might have different functions from each other, right? We might not have the same picture because I had a different picture earlier today. Okay, use the graph to determine the following. <clears throat> use the graph to determine the following. And then they give us a, a list, a gang of stuff that they want us to find, all right? So assume that the graph of the function continues its trend beyond um, the displayed coordinate grid. All right, so what is the domain? All right, and it says type your answer in interval notation. So just a quick reminder about interval notation. They're talking about these things. All right, and all the rules that go with that. All right, so what's the domain? We said that the domain was our X's or how much space does it take up left to right? Well, luckily they gave us a picture. So it's pretty clear that this graph is going to continue, oh man, continue on in that direction forever. And even though it's going down, it's still pointed, it's still traveling in that uh, negative X direction. So over here, it's gonna do the same thing, but in the positive X direction. All right, so if you agree with that, <clears throat> then the way we say that is, all right, so remember interval notation says, take the smallest number and then the biggest number second. Smallest number first, biggest number last. All right, so what is gonna be the smallest X value that we use? Well, if we go in that direction forever, that's negative infinity. Negative. Comma. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm about to lose my voice. All right, and then we said it goes forever this direction, so positive infinity. Okay. Does anybody need all right, so the domain is the set of all x's or how, or the x's that, um, how wide the function is. The range is how tall is this function? Um, and I love finding the range um, graphically because it's I think it's easier to, to find than the domain. All right, so we say, where is the 
lowest or here's a peak. So I'm going to start there. Let me make this bigger. I'm getting old. I need it a little bit bigger. I think I can read that. All right. So the highest point is right here. And that is the y value 1, 2, negative 3. OK. Side, if you're OK with that. And then these arrows mean forever, right? It's going to continue going down forever, even though it's going to the left. I mean, excuse me, to the left and to the right. It's still going down. All right, so that's negative infinity. OK, so remember, you have to put the smallest number first and then the biggest number. Well, negative 3 is much bigger than negative infinity, right? It's much closer to 0 than negative infinity. OK. And the way I know that's confusing, but the way I remember it is my bank account. Would you rather have negative $3 or negative infinity dollars? You want that one because it's it's more, it's more, even though it's negative, it's way more than that, right? All right, so this one comes first. Infinity always uses parentheses, negative infinity, comma, negative three. There is a point here, meaning like there's no discontinuity, there's no holes or asymptotes or anything right there. There's a point there, so. We're going to use a bracket around around three. Okay, decide if you're okay with that. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to keep going. Okay, so all right, find the x-intercepts if there are any. So x-intercepts means where does it touch the x-axis? And mine does not touch the x-axis at all. So there's not one. Decide if yours has one. <clears throat> all right, y-intercepts, where does this blue thing touch the y-axis? And it very clearly touches right there. We, start, we already said there was a peak right there at negative three. And they said type of integer. So you don't need to type a ordered pair, just put negative, well, whatever your number is. Okay. Somebody else probably had the same question. <clears throat> All right, so find the values of the function. So we're at the last part. Um, and so this, this is just telling you well, algebraically, this would mean, hey, plug in negative two for x and then solve and get the y value, right? But graphically, all this means is when x, let me remind you just in case, right, f of x, and then we see f of negative two, there's telling you when x is negative 2, what's y? Okay, so when x is negative 2, y, or the graph is down here at negative 5 on my graph. I need to do that in a color. Need that. Um, let's, do, let's do red. Come on. Okay. At negative, okay, matter of fact, let's do it like this. At negative two, because you can see a little bit better, right? I just telling you to read the graph. Mine is at negative five. Okay, and you have to enter both of these before you can check it, uh, I think. Um, F of one, so when X is one, for me, when X is one, what's the graph doing? Well, 
x equals one is right here. My graph is at negative four. Right there, right, it's one higher, so negative four. Okay. Use the graph of the quadratic function, blah, 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 to find the vertex, axis of symmetry, the minimum and maximum uh, value of the function. All right, so we just had a test on quadratics and we, we, like, we kind of touched on uh, vertex form. This actually is vertex form and uh, we, we talked about it when we did completing the square. Vertex form um, gives us a lot of information. It's called vertex form because the vertex can be found right in the, oh, in the equation. All right, so H and K are your, is your vertex. The vertex is, that's this little peak. Um, well, here it's a little dip. But the vertex is also going to be where your max or min happens. All right, so we like vertex form for graphing purposes. All right, so the vertex is, it's whatever this point is. My point is, four, uh, and they gave it to me right there, four, um, zero. Decide what your vertex is. Always put the X coordinate first. It's on the X axis at, well, mine is at four and it didn't go anywhere in the Y direction, so zero. <clears throat> the axis of symmetry happens at the same place where the vertex does, so You can see, you see it's right there, but it's this line right here. So how do you write that? It's H, well, type an equation. Remember in our notes, we said X equals some number. So what number? This number, the same number that's right here, the, eight, the X coordinate, X equals four. Oops. Okay, so we might not have the same exact graph, but your answer should go the same way. Whatever your vertex, whatever your X coordinate is for your vertex, that's gonna be your axis of symmetry uh, equation. Um, what is the minimum or maximum value of the function? Well, sometimes they want it as an ordered pair. Earlier today, I figured out they want it as a, um, I think they just want the value. So the Y value of this point, your minimum. It actually happens to be, why is that so tiny? Zero, that's the Y value when you're on the X axis. So your minimum is at, let's see, y equals zero. All right. All right, number three says, graph the exponential function, identify domain range, blah, 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 blah. Find all the stuff, find all the things. All right, we should, re we're supposed to remember what four to the x looks like, but if you don't, of course, remember, go to your calculator. I'm going to predict that four to the X looks like this because that's what exponential functions look like. It's not transformed anywhere, it's not flipped. It should still look like a little J. <clears throat> and it's also growth because that four is a whole number, right? So let's look. Calculator. Yeah, isn't my calculator cool? I'm so happy I finally got this. All right, so four to the X 
four to the X graph it. You can do this on Desmos online. So there it is, like a little backwards L. All right, so let's find the one that looks like that. Mine is this one. Does anybody in here have, all right, identify the domain. What's your domain here? Well, we should remember that um, <clears throat> for exponential functions, we're allowed to plug in any number that we want. We can plug in positive numbers, negative numbers, fractions, decimals, it doesn't matter. We can plug in anything. It says um, type in an inequality. Type in inequality. Speak. Um, yeah, I was about to say what? Um, all real numbers. That's how we say that we can plug in all the numbers. Gosh. All right, there we go. All right, let me get rid of this. All right, what's your range? The range is definitely not going to be all real numbers because this graph doesn't even touch the, the bottom half of the y-axis. All right, so, and actually that's that's a feature of um, exponential functions, right? There is an invisible, oh man, it's called asymptote. Invisible asymptote right, right there. It's sitting on the x-axis, which means y is going to be bigger than zero. It's going to be all the positive numbers. No matter, so we can plug in anything that we want, right? The domain is all real numbers. We can plug in algebraically any number that we want into this function, but the function is going to spit back out values that are all positive. It's not going to spit, spit out anything that's negative. The range is type in inequality, y, and you need a symbol. It's going to be, and it's not going to be equal to zero either because remember that's an asymptote. Visually, that's a, graphically, that's an asymptote there. Um, algebraically, what's happening is even if you do like, what was it, four to the zero, remember that that turns into a one, okay? And then negative exponents, they just turn into fractions. So that's why it's not gonna be ever equal to zero. That's the reason there's an asymptote there. All right, so y should be bigger than zero, let's check. <clears throat> Um, your y-intercept, you can look at the graph right there. Let's make it just a little bit bigger. It's crossing right at one, so you can look at the graph, or you can remember exponential functions. They have the format. There's your y-intercept. There's your y-intercept right there. Algebraically, a times b to the x, right? Whatever this a is, that is your intercept. And we don't have an a, so that means it's an invisible one. So there, there's little ways you can check. You can also look on your graph um, at, the, at, at your table, in your calculator at your table. And when x is 0, y is one. All right, so lots of ways you can check behind yourself and make sure you have the right answer. Y intercept is what is one. They just want the number. They don't need the ordered pair there. The asymptote is, this is an, an equation. Well, we know the asymptote is a flat line. So if vertical lines are x equals, flat lines are y equals, and it happens at zero. Again, let me do 
just show you. See, I was sitting on the x-axis. On the x-axis, y is zero. Okay. Let me pause right there. Everybody okay with that? All right, so looking at the lesson quiz in this same playlist. All right. Which statements about the behavior of blah, blah, blah are true? Select all that apply. All right, so they're asking about these things, these features. So you're gonna go directly to your calculator, to your graph. Okay, so if you're on Desmos, just type in the equation. If you have your own calculator or a simulator like this, um, emulator like this, excuse me, then you're gonna type in x squared plus four x, or use the one that's on your phone. Okay. All right, it says, which ones are true? Okay, so does it have an axis of symmetry at x equals negative two? Let's see. Is there an axis of symmetry at x equals negative two? And it that looks like about the middle. So I'll go with that. Okay, the range is the set of all real numbers. That already sounds wrong. Let's check the range. Well, the range, remember, is the set of y values. Let's see what I have written here. And here, I'm telling you, look at the graph, look at the graph, look at the graph. Range is the y values or how tall is your function? Okay, so when we look at this thing, how much space does it take up vertically? Well, the lowest point is right there. And if this is going to go forever, excuse me, if this is going to go up forever, that's going to mean positive in the y direction, positive infinity. So whatever this number is, the range is not all real numbers. So we're not gonna check that one. Okay, the maximum value, and, and I don't know if yours are in the same order as mine, so make sure you, you click the right one. The maximum value is of f is negative seven when x is negative two. So remember that the the max or minimum happens wherever the middle of it is, wherever the vertex is, wherever the axis, axis of symmetry is. But this is saying a maximum, and this is not a maximum, this is a minimum. Maximum would look like that. That would be a maximum. We're looking at a minimum, so we're not gonna check that because they said it wrong. Okay, as x approaches infinity, f of x or y approaches infinity. So how does this work? As x approaches positive infinity, meaning as x, as we look at the graph from left to right. Okay. Y approaches positive infinity as well. Okay, so is the graph going up? Yeah. These arrows are pointing in the same exact direction. Okay, so I think that's true. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity as well. Okay. As x approaches negative infinity, so looking the other way, 
as x approaches negative infinity, looking at the graph from right to left, f of x or y approaches negative infinity as well. Oh, I shouldn't have did that. f of x approaches negative infinity as well. Okay. Negative infinity. So they're saying that the graph is going down on this side. And it's very clearly not. They're both going up. So we're not going to check that one. Decide if you're OK with that. All right, <clears throat> complete each sentence with minimum or maximum and the corresponding numeric values. This is something you're gonna do on your calculator. You can go straight to your calculator in Desmos, probably. All right, so minimum, maximum, and then what the value is. So. I think we all have the same exact um, functions because this, this is the quiz. So negative absolute value of negative four, negative five. And over here in the notes, I had kind of predicted it using transformation rules. It was flipped over. The little V that's supposed to be right here was flipped over and it was translated to the right and down. So it should have been over here somewhere, okay. Let's look at our graph so we get it right. Y equals negative absolute value of X minus four. Jump out of that minus five. All right, so you would graph it. And it's right there where we where we predicted based on yesterday's lesson. And um, it says, okay, so is this a minimum or a maximum? That's very clearly a, like a mountain peak. So that's a maximum right there. And you have to type that in. Maximum. And what is the maximum value? Looks like it's right there at four and one, two, three, four, five, four and negative five, four and negative five. Oh, let's do this. Okay, <laughs> um, so, but look at the way they have it written. So negative five when X is four. All right, so you can do the same exact thing there. We only got a few more minutes left. So I'm gonna jump to, um, this I did on paper. I did all of them except number four. So let me look at number four. Yeah, so in behavior. It says drag the items to complete the sentences about the in behavior of the exponential function graph. So right away, exponential means asymptote. All right, so looking at this, as X approaches positive infinity, meaning look this way, this graph is clearly going this. f of x or y is very clearly going down. Hopefully you agree with that. So how do you say that? 
uh, y approaches negative infinity. Your y's are going to keep decreasing. All right, so that's the right side of the graph. The left side of the graph. As, and let's go ahead and move this. As X approaches negative infinity. So as X gets smaller and smaller, Y, well, okay. This is flipped. So there's an asymptote right here. This invisible line that's not a part of the graph, but our graph is gonna bend around, right? It looks like it's getting flat, so that's how you know there's an asymptote there. So, okay, what does that mean? It means that Y is approaching, not infinity, but it's approaching the number that's at this black line, which is positive three. Is there anybody who is not okay before we get off of here? I have 10 minutes. Okay, additional practice. Okay, this you can just graph it on your calculator. Let's see. Graph the absolute value. Um, okay, and state the domain and range of the function. Is that what the first one was too? Yeah, and then state the domain and range. All right, so these are gonna be very similar. We did a couple of these already. So let's see if there's something else that you're gonna be asked to do. Here we go. Find the domain and the range of the function. So domain, you can find this out um, algebraically. And I want us to um, know how to do that. Of course, you can look at your graph, but this particular function um, is gonna have restrictions on the domain. So those other two functions that we just saw, the um, absolute value and the um, quadratic formula, quadratic function, excuse me, those don't have restrictions on their domain. We, we can plug in any number that we want, but there's this ugly square root over here. And we know from last unit that we're not allowed to have take the square root of negative numbers. All right, so, but there's an X under there. So we gotta make sure X doesn't make that thing be negative. Okay, so algebraically really quickly, you would say whatever's underneath your radical X minus seven we need to keep this positive. So it has to be bigger than, it could be equal to zero because we know the square root of zero is just zero. All right, so that means that X better be bigger than positive seven. Okay. Your domain is all the X's as long as they are bigger than or equal to seven for my problem. Oh God, Miss Cole. I did not consider this transformation out here. So on our graph, let's clear just real quick. On our graph, we got square root of x take away, not, not this negative sign, seven. So if we remember from the lesson yesterday, this thing is moved to the right seven and it's moved up nine. So I got a little bit ahead of myself, plus nine. Mm. 
and you can barely see it because the whole thing's been moved way over here. But in that case, I feel like the domain is still interval notation. Okay, I'm tripping you. Interval notation, seven comma, why is that red? Seven comma, and then positive infinity. I thought they were telling me my answer was wrong. Where is it? There it is. Okay. And a All right, so we had the right answer, but it just, we didn't, I didn't, you gotta pay attention to how they want you to write it. Okay, so we just saw on our um, graph though, it's, it doesn't start until way over here. Your X values don't start until way over here at seven. Your Y values don't begin until nine. The whole thing is shifted up here. So how do we say that? all the Y values that are bigger than nine. So it's gonna look very similar. Okay, there's one more that you want to see. Can you explain that a little bit farther? Cause I don't get it. You don't like that one? Okay, so on your graph, This thing, so this function, when you graph it, it's a weird shape, right? It's not a straight line, it's not a parabola, it's not the V, it looks like this. Okay, that's what this graph looks like, okay? And normally, it's right here. But based on yesterday's lesson, it was shifted to the right seven. And then it was shifted up nine units. So that's why when we looked at it on here, like you could barely see it because this window is only 10 by 10, right? All right. so. Domain is how wide is this graph? How much space does it take up left to left to right? Okay. All right, so this graph. Let's do it like this. This point is seven, nine. And that's just based on the way that this is written, right? And how it was shifted, okay? What I'm not showing is all these little things, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not perfect, but you get the idea, okay? Okay, not perfect by any means. Okay, so this thing was moved all the way over here. So it's saying, how, how many X's are we gonna touch? How many X's is this black graph going to touch? Well, it doesn't even start. It doesn't touch any negative values. And that's what we were saying about the square root. We can't have any negative values under there. So we're not gonna touch any of those. But because it was shifted, the first X value that it uses is seven. Okay. And then, well, what's the last X value? What's the biggest X value? Well, this goes, oh man, I wanted that to be black. This goes to the right forever. 
You agree? So that's going to be infinity. At first, I got it wrong at first because I had typed it as an inequality. I said x has to be bigger than or equal to seven, but they wanted it written that way. And all this says is the domain is all the x's that are bigger than seven. That's where the graph is. I get it now, but um, why do you have to use two different types of those parentheses, like of interval notation? Why is there bracket versus parentheses? Okay. Yeah. Um, good question. So math people are very particular, right? They have their own language. So to a math person, the parentheses says, don't include this number. Or it, or it can communicate to another math person that there's a discontinuity at this point. So like when we were talking about the exponential function, we had to use a parentheses um, because there was an asymptote, right? And the graph is not actually gonna touch the number that the asymptote was at. So that's why we had to, that, and that communicates it to another math person. But the bracket says, hey, include that number. There is a point there. There's no asymptote, there's no hole, there's no um, other discontinuity, like in a step function or something. There's none of that going on in our function. So that's what the bracket communicates to another math person. Um, and I realize this, if you have to go, you can go. But um, so, but the only thing you have to remember is that infinity always, always has a parentheses, always. That, that's why there is a bracket versus parentheses there. Does that help? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good questions. I'm gonna end it right here. Uh, well, I'm gonna stop recording right here. Let me pause.